Before we get into our training video, if by chance you found this video as a recommended video on YouTube, this training video is actually part of an extensive Corel Draw for Beginners training series from AdvancedTShirts.com. We have developed dozens of videos and we also have available on our website downloadable work along files that you can work with in Corel Draw while you're working through the training videos. Easily the best and fastest way to learn. If these videos are helpful to you, please take a second to add a like to the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be notified when we upload new video content. And of course, in the comment section below, you can post your questions or your Corel Draw video tutorial requests. In this session, we're going to go over object snapping in Corel Draw. And I do use snapping, particularly when I want objects to be butted right up to each other or attached to each other. I want them accurately connected for the design process. To enable snapping, we can come up to the standard bar and we can disable and enable that. And then there's also some options here, snap to. We have document grid, baseline grid, guidelines, object page. I'll just be working with objects in this session. We can also use the shortcut Alt-Q. I'll disable in the standard bar and then I'll just press Alt-Q on my keyboard. That'll enable that Alt-Q again and it will disable it. Now that's nice when you're working in Corel because you can go into the snapping mode and come out of it very easily because I really don't like to work all the time with snapping on. Because if I'm moving objects around, I want to move something just a little bit of, of distance or make a small adjustment to it, very often the snapping will be difficult to work with because it'll be trying to snap to, you know, one of the midpoints or the node or something. I won't be able to make that movement of the object in the design that I'd like to. We want to be aware of also object snapping locations. We have the node that's in the corner or what would be the nodes that we make adjustments to our shapes with. We have the edge of the vector line. We have the midpoint in between the two nodes and we have the center point. Those are the snapping locations for objects. I'm going to scroll down and we'll just create a racing flag working with snapping. Very basic practice but yet very effective. We create a perfect rectangle. We'll cover the rectangle in a later training session, but I'm just going to left click on the rectangle tool. I'll select that. I'll come over here. I'll hold down shift and control to create a perfect square. Just like that. And then I'm going to hit alt Q to enable snapping. And then I'm going to hit my spaceboard to go back to the pick tool. Now I'll zoom in here and I'm going to go to the edge here. Left click, hold down, right click one time, hold down constrain until I hit that edge. Now that's really lined up perfectly and then I'll release. Now I'm going to take this object and fill it with black and then I'm going to take this object and fill it with white. Now I'll go back to the black object and I'll get the edge, left click, constrain, holding down control, bring that here and release that. I'm going to go control R, one, two, three, and let's say a fourth time. These are all perfectly spaced because I did it as control R. Then I'll take the white rectangle, go to the edge, left click, start moving, right click one time to duplicate, hold down control to the edge, and then I'll release. Then I'll hit control R. Now I have my object set up as black and white checkers for my racing flag. I can lasso and select everything here. Once again, I'm going to select an edge, left click, hold down, constrain, right click one time to duplicate. I'm on the edge and there we have duplication of one of the rows for the flag. Now I'm going to take the black squares holding down shift selecting them and fill those with white then i'll go here to what would be the white holding down shift selecting them 
and then come up into the color palette left click to fill those with black so now I have two rows of black and white checkers for my flag I'll lasso all of that and once again go to the edge start pulling down hold control to constrain and snap to the midpoint or the edge and release now I made a mistake there I should have hit my right mouse button so I'll hit control Z left click hold down control right click one time to the edge there we go and then control R one more time if I want it yet another time I could do that or I could go with this size for the racing flag I'll select everything here and the next thing I want to do is convert this to curves because I don't want to use straight line segments and nodes from the rectangle shape when I go to the envelope tool so I could go up here convert to curves or just hit control Q but I'll convert here now with all of this selected I'm gonna to go to the shape tool and then I'm gonna lasso all of the nodes in there I'm gonna change all the nodes to curve now we'll cover all this in future training I'm just going over some things right now and then I'm going to add some nodes so that everything will be able to flow nicely with the envelope when I apply that effect next with all of this selected I will want to group that so I'll hit control G now that it's grouped, you'll see the shape tool won't work anymore. I can go to the space bar on my keyboard, go back to the pick tool. This is all grouped now. I won't need snapping anymore, so I'll hit Alt-Q to disable that. And you can see that turn that off. Now I'll zoom out here, and I have my basis for my flag. Now, of course, it's not the same as the flag that I have in the work along here. But now you can take this flag. I'll take this racing design. I'll delete this and I'll delete this and I'll take this flag and I'm going to give this an outline of let's say three points that's too much we'll go with 1.5 next I'll come over to my interactive tools I'll go to envelope and I'll just double click with the shape tool to delete these nodes in the envelope tool and I'll go to my nodes and I'll just shape and here is where it's important that I converted to curves because had I not converted everything to curves and added the node then the object that I have or the actual group of objects in the envelope would not be working very well and we'll make this a little more dramatic pull this in this way a little bit and we'll bring this up just a bit here then I can take this and we'll bring it down to our design. I'll scale it down a bit. I can take this and just go right click and go to order to back of page. Rotate that. And I'll have a nice flag touch on my racing design. Then I'll come down here and just duplicate that. Left click, right click one time holding down the left mouse button and release that up here to mirror objects I'll mirror both ways and right click and we'll go to back of page and I'll bring this in set this up right about there so we've added a nice racing flag touch to our racing design I'll push my center mouse wheel zoom in I think it would be better if I had this set up like the other one so I'll select that and I'm just going to rotate this kind of like that and add it in right down there kind of like that so very quickly using snapping and basic rectangles I've been able to set up a racing flag element for my racing members logo design working with the snapping and some other things in Corel Draw. And some of the things you saw here, we've got tutorials in future sessions for training on working with those tools. Now I could dial this in some more and tweak it and do some more work on it, but I just wanted to demonstrate the snapping. We'll wrap here and we'll continue 
in our next session.